my wife and I have been running the rat race for years. A family, a house in the city, two dogs and a cat. The stereotypical American dream. But the city took its toll. The neighborhood got worse. The crime rose. And we found ourselves looking for a way out. Our opportunity came when I was offered a new job out of state. It was a great career move, but we didn't want to move to a new city just to have the same problems again. So we started looking around and found a great mountain community about an hour and a half from the job. A great ranch style house with a big back porch, windows everywhere, and a lot of property. The backyard has a big grassy area and a creek that cuts the property in half. Then acres of woods beyond it. It's huge, and the house is more than twice the size of our house in the city. It's all updated and has no neighbors within a mile. It was a radical change from the life we had lived in the city. But best of all, it was less than half of what we were paying for our old house. The house was a foreclosure, and when we asked the agent about it, they simply said the old family had abandoned the property. We really didn't think anything of it. The first three months were uneventful. With us settling into our new life, the kids getting used to a new school and new friends, and most of all, us getting used to the big house and property. But then the weather turned cold and things started to get weird on the property. It started with noises from the back. Things we chalked up to being in the woods. Then the motion lights around the house started going off randomly. Once again, we just chalked it up to being in the woods. But last night it all changed. Last night was the most terrifying night of my life. One of the dogs was at the back door whining and scratching. I assumed he needed to go to the bathroom. I grabbed my flashlight and walked out the back door. Instantly, something felt off. The dog bolted for the back property, growling and snarling. It was a cold night, about 30 degrees, but the dog plunged straight into the creek and out the other bank, running off into the woods behind the property. Flashlight bouncing, I ran after him, calling his name. I got to the creek and made my way across the makeshift bridge, trying desperately to follow him. I could hear the dog still growling and barking from somewhere up ahead, and I pushed further away from the safety of the house and deeper into the woods. That's when I heard it. A shriek like I've never heard before in my life. It was a mix of moaning wails and metal on metal. It echoed through the trees and froze me in my tracks. My dog bounded its way back to me and covered down behind me. I turned around and could just make out the warm glow of the house behind me and the cold dark ahead of me. I swung my flashlight around wildly, looking for the source of the noise, and that's when I heard an even more terrifying noise. Out of the cold silence, my wife's voice floated all around me. Babe, the voice called out. I whipped back around and could just barely make out the image of my wife, safely inside of our house. The voice called out again. Babe, I'm right here. The voice came from deeper into the woods. Then came another voice, just as clear as the other. It was my dad's voice. Come out here, it called. I swung the flashlight around again and this time caught the briefest glint of light bouncing off of eyes. The creature was in my beam of light for barely a second. But it was tall, maybe six feet and ashen white. It had long, spindly fingers that grasped the trunk of a pine tree. And then it was gone. I turned back and ran towards the house. I ran headlong into the icy creek and stumbled. My dog ran past me and 
Making it back to the yard and up the porch, I dug my hands into the freezing muddy bank and pulled myself out, not stopping to look back. When I reached the porch, I scrambled inside. My wife ran over to me asking what had happened. I just shook my head. I'm not even certain myself what had happened. I was driving alone in a national park, very far from people, on a bright full moon night, a huge, clear moon, the kind of moonlight you can read by. The road went straight along the bottom of a wide, flat, mostly barren valley, then banked up and sharply left onto the ridge. It was about 10 p.m. and I drove through the valley on full alert watching for animals and loving the scenery in the crazy bright moonlight. When I hit the curb and went into that sharp uphill left, I saw something through the side of my window. Something white. It was rapidly getting larger in my vision, as though it had been moving parallel to me. But the turn in the road meant I was now in its path. So I turned my head and looked directly. It was white, man-shaped, but without genitals and completely naked. A deathly nauseating white with a greasy shine, completely hairless. It was crawling on its hands and knees, but it was half the size of the car, and it was coming so very, very fast. It had a rubbery face, distorted by hate or a scream. Black eyes that reflected the moonlight. That look on its face, I can't even tell you. I can still make myself feel sick from that memory. I believe that it was intelligent and it wanted to tear me apart with its teeth. Its speed was horrifying. It went from being a small white spot to spitting distance in the time it took me to make that turn. When I unfroze myself and hit the gas, it was on the road. I braced for it to run into my car door, but then it was gone. The rear view mirror showed me nothing. I've never told anybody. I've seen a few minor glitchy ghosty things over my many years, but nothing has ever frightened me like that. It was looking at me, and I don't know what it was. I can't seem to find any reference to anything like it. and. I wish I knew if this thing was something from folklore. I'm a male and was in sixth grade at the time. Our family just moved into a new house, so we hadn't fully unpacked. The house had one of those finished basements, so there were a set of stairs that led down to it. Once in the basement, with the stairs directly behind you, off to your left was a small bedroom with a single closet, and in front of you was an abnormally long skinny room. The long skinny room was the length of the other two rooms in the basement. On your left side, at the other end of the room, but still along the same wall as the door, was a very small closet. On your right side of the room in the corner was a window. Well, essentially a window that you can jump down to and let you access the basement room. Most of our furniture was unpacked, but we still had a lot of cardboard boxes that were stacked up in the long room. I didn't admit this to the other people, but I was actually quite afraid of being left alone in the new house, especially at night. So right as my parents were leaving, I turned off the lights in the basement and closed the door and just hung out in my room upstairs. Around 20 or 30 minutes after they left, I heard a fairly loud noise, like a smash of some kind. I froze and listened in case it happened again, but there were no other noises. Something didn't feel right, so I immediately called my parents and told them what happened. They helped me calm down and told me most likely a box that was stacked up had fallen over, 
but they had already turned around and were coming home just in case. While I was talking with them on the phone, I walked downstairs to the basement and turned on the lights to the main room. I then walked to the door of the long room with the window and unpacked boxes. I opened the door and had to turn on the light to see anything. Sure enough, a few stacks of boxes had fallen over. I told them it was nothing, but they were still on their way home. I said I'll see you when you guys get here in a little bit and walked back upstairs. Once they got home, my dad and I went downstairs to pick up the boxes. When we opened the door, my skin went completely white and I just froze. There were no boxes on the floor. They had been restacked. My father checked the window well and the lock didn't work. It could easily be opened when you thought it was locked. We used some wood to jam in the window so it could not open and he went through and checked the rest of the rooms in the house. I don't know who or what was in there and restacked those boxes, but it still gives me chills to this day. This happened to me when I was about eight or nine years old, and to this day, it is one of the most disturbing, confusing encounters I have ever had. It was a very hot afternoon during summer vacation, and I decided to have a lemonade stand down the street from my house. My friend and I rode our bikes two blocks away and set up shop. A few hours passed and she decided she had to go home for dinner. It was starting to get a little dark out and I was left to pack up the little table and the lemonade pitchers by myself. Then a man walked up to me. He was about 30 something years old and had a very strange expression on his face. Like he was smiling and wide eyed. He walked up very close to me and I'll never forget what he said. What would happen if you had no skin? I was taken aback and just responded, I'm not sure. Then he said, what would happen if you had no heart? Then what would happen if you had no toes? What would happen if you had no eyes? He kept getting closer and closer to me and still had something very, very off about his facial expression. I was naive and young, and although I didn't realize how creepy this really was, I felt really uncomfortable and started grabbing all of my stuff because I had so many things I couldn't ride my bike home. I had to wheel it next to me. When I started walking away towards my house, the man started following behind me still not saying anything except for asking me what would happen if I didn't have certain body parts. When I sped up, he did too. He eventually trailed off and every time I looked back he was just standing on the corner looking at me. I never told my parents and I never saw him again. I was honestly more uncomfortable and confused than I was scared, but now looking back on it, I wonder, was he just a mentally handicapped harmless man, or was he some kind of dangerous disturbed man? Regardless, I still hope I never run into him again. This happened in 2006, when my husband and I had just started dating. It was Christmas Eve, and we had gone to the pub to celebrate with some of his friends. Almost as soon as we walked in the door, one of his friends approached him, looking agitated. She said she had something to show him outside, so the two of us followed her out. She took out her digital camera and showed us a photo. It was of three young women, smiling, standing with their arms around each other's shoulders. To me, it didn't look like anything out of the ordinary. 
but I had just moved to town and didn't know any of the women. My husband seemed puzzled too at first, before his friend broke in. This was taken tonight. I watched the color literally drain out of his face. Fifteen minutes ago, in there, she said. They both started kind of freaking out looking at the camera, then each other, then back at the camera. By this time I was super confused, so I asked what was going on. My husband explained that one of the women in the photo had died from cancer the year before. The other two were her sister and best friend. My husband's friend was really torn about showing the other woman the photo, and together they decided not to. I thought this was the wrong decision, but I didn't really know any of them very well and didn't feel like it was my place to intervene. I was later introduced to the two women and can confirm they were wearing the same clothes as in the photo and the interior of the pub also matched. I don't know if the friend ever showed them or what happened to the photo, but I looked at it a number of times that night and I was sober, as we had just arrived. And I know there was a third woman there. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel and leave a like. It helps a lot and helps me make more videos. I'll be back really soon with another video, so stay tuned.